looking to see see a lot of uh, things I've never seen before. Um, a lot of new things, looking to learn a lot. Uh, hear some stories of a lot of the people that live on live in Hastings. And yeah, I'm looking forward to a lot of the stories that I'm gonna get to see. Talk to this uh, girl, her name was Paige, she was 19 years old from Brooklyn and uh, her parents had abandoned her and her family and left. She was left alone in Brooklyn at 11 years old and she first tried uh, crack cocaine at the age of 11 and then she wound her way up in East Hastings Street and now has an addiction which she can't stop and she's stuck there homeless at 19 years old. And it really stuck out to me because she was the same age as me. And that really struck me as a different worlds we live in and how her world affected and her entire story of how she started when she was 11, a rough life with her parents. When she was 11 years old, she was uh, coming home from school and she saw a homeless man with drugs and decided to steal it and try it. And that got her hooked. She tried it once and it got her hooked. And then she uh, went to Seattle and hopped the border. And I thought that was crazy as well. And how her life changed all because she was 11, she really had no chance in life at all. It rained all day. She was collecting cardboard boxes to, I think, uh, create shelter for her to sleep that night because she had no place to sleep. And it was really wet on the ground so that she was collecting boxes for her to sleep. She said she was 19 years old, but the wear and tear in her body from addiction, she definitely didn't look like a 19 year old person that I would see in my everyday life on my hockey team or at school. Paige, the, her addiction has uh, paid a huge toll on her body and she doesn't look like a 19 year old her girl that you would see in everyday life. She, she wished she had more support and uh, a lot more support. Like obviously when a young age, you need that support and you need that care from your parents and that guidance and she didn't have that. And I mean, that made me feel really bad for her. into uh, their homes for people that are homeless and so they're uh, they pay $500 to live in these rooms that are the size of a bed they have drugs are smoked in them there we couldn't even touch the walls from rats and other insects in there we went to a kitchen which is a joint kitchen I don't know how many rooms are in this complex but there was one kitchen that they used which is absolutely filthy there was, I think what it was, was pee on the floor, filth, and this is what these people cook and live in, and yeah, it was, it was really tough to see. Okay. So if you ever go up there and you want to try drugs, and they tell you to try it once, don't bother me. It'll get you for life, right? And there are very few people who get out of the porch only for me. My addiction lasted two years. I got out of it, got myself back together, ran a farm, if you guys uh, Yeah, we talked to a guy named Nick, and he was a rugby player. He was a good kid. He said he was good in school. And then one day he was hanging out with friends and they started smoking weed. And he said he did it too. And he said it was the biggest regret of his life. He told us the main thing to focus on was don't, don't do it because the cool kids are doing it. Or don't do it because other kids are doing it. You know, there's a lot of ways to get around it. And he said he smoked weed and after weed it went to cocaine and cocaine went to heroin. He ended up here and he said it ruined his life and he told us never to do it. Just because uh, a drug shows up at a party doesn't mean you can do it. I sit around smoking weed and drinking, you know, in front of the cool kids. And then the weed turned into coke at parties, right? And then coke, you go to the speed, and the speed the heroin. Was yeah. it was it one time kind of that got you hooked um, on, or was it the, kind of The first over? time, you, you get the fifth grade, right? and then you always get the hit for it, and it progresses, great, right? And that's where the chase the right? <laughs> comes into it, right? Because you're always chased, not that first high, yeah. and you're never going to get it again, right? I overdose and I see people do drugs every day and then I see them die, well not die, but OD every day, like sometimes 30 a day, sometimes 10 a day, but it's, it's scary, it's yeah. really scary. Sure you lost people that you were friends with? I lost with my girlfriend, this, right? my old lady, yeah, she was, yeah. I, left, I walked in and she was dead, so.
yeah, it's just crazy to think that two blocks can be like 50% of the crime in Vancouver. And then you can go over another two blocks and it's ritzy and updated and, and people who aren't doing drugs on the street and are having a good time and not afraid of getting stabbed or something. It's just, it's crazy. It's really eye-opening. Um, it made me feel uh, like I wanted to help and wanted to reach out with them, like hearing their stories and how helpless they were. And it wasn't really, it's not really a choice. Like we talked to one man and he said he didn't like his addiction. And like, I thought that it was just easy to stop and how, made me realize how hard it actually is to stop your addiction. And it's not really their choice. Like they're stuck there. They want to get out, but they're just stuck. They're just feeding their addiction. It really opens your eyes to what reality is for other people. You can kind of get stuck in your own world out and what you are and I guess what they call uh, first world problems of and then you go down there and you see what people actually live through and what problems are actually like and you just you can't take anything for granted because we're fortunate enough to live the life that we do and I get to go to the hockey rink and do what I love every day and these people they it's raining here in Vancouver again today and they're stuck out on the street lots of people with no shelter just trying to chase their next high with this addiction that they can't crack and they're just stuck out. Support yourself with good people. Like don't, don't surround yourself with people who are gonna negatively impact your life. Always make sure your surroundings are with people who are gonna be uh, the best interest of you. And even when it comes down to it, even though if you surround yourself with good people, make sure you're making the choice for yourself and not for other people as well. It's mind blowing that you just walk down and there are so many people out there openly doing drugs, shooting up heroin, smoking crack right out in front of you. We're with police officers, they didn't care that there's police there. These people are so addicted to their drugs that they really don't care who's there, what's around, they just need to get those drugs. And then the, what stuck out to me was the smell and the filth of what these people are living in. Like we walked down an alley and there was human feces on the side. There's rats crawling around. It smells like a porta potty. It's absolutely filthy, the garbage and needles and tourniquets from people doing all these drugs and they're what they're living in like you'd go by in these alleys and there's piles of garbage that these people are rummaging through to try and sell for drugs yeah it's mind-blowing i'd probably say no then i'd try to ask them why they're doing it and try to be the best friend I could be and help them get out of that situation. Because nobody wants to see their buddies doing it. Especially when you see what happens to people living here in East Hastings. I would just say don't take anything for granted. What you have if you're fortunate enough to have good parents who support you. And uh, if you don't, please go find the help that you need to there's lots of people that will support you and help you through whatever you're going through. You're not alone. There's so many people going through it and there's so much you can do to help with that. Well, first off, I'd say don't try it at all because that was a big advice that we got from them. And second off is I'd say surround yourself with good people and get support if you need it from anyone. There's people out there and anyone's willing to help. I feel like it's my responsibility now to show kids what happened and what we saw in the streets and make sure that they never end up there. Make sure they live a life that they never regret. Yeah.